Welcome back and welcome to part two of this Blender tutorial series where we're creating this birdhouse animation. So if you haven't seen part one, then definitely check that out with the link in the description. And in part one, we modeled the birdhouse. And in this part, we're gonna do the materials for the birdhouse and we'll be making the tree branches and the tree trunk. And if you'd like to help support the channel and purchase the tutorial files, you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. Links are in the description. And then also real quick before we start, I wanted to let you know about an amazing Blender add-on for getting realistic lighting. The Pro Atmo add-on is an amazing Blender add-on for getting realistic sky lighting as well as sky and space backgrounds. The add-on is very customizable, including settings for the ground, atmosphere, sun, clouds, planets, stars, and even nebula. The the add-on also comes with some presets that you can choose from, like cloud presets and nebula presets. You can also add planets to your skies, and you can even create your own deep space backgrounds. You can find my full add-on review video with the link in the description, and if you purchase the add-on through my affiliate link, you'll be helping to support this channel. So let's now add the wood materials. So I'm going to start by going over here into the shading workspace and I will zoom into the birdhouse and I'm going to go into the material preview because we haven't set up the lighting yet. So I'm just going to go into the material preview so that I can see the wood. And then I will just select one of the objects here and let's add a new material here by clicking on new and I can just call this wood light because we're going to have two different materials, a darker wood material for the roof and then the rest of the birdhouse is going to be a lighter wood. So we're going to have two different wood materials. Now in in part one I mentioned the free wood textures from Ambient CG that we're going to be using in the video. So if you haven't downloaded that texture yet, then you can download that with the link in the description. Now to automatically add in all the texture maps, I'm going to be using the feature of the Node Wrangler add-on. So if you don't have the Node Wrangler enabled, you can click here on Edit and you can go to the Preferences and then over there in the Add-ons tab just search for Node Wrangler and you can just check mark the Node Wrangler add-on. So with the Node Wrangler enabled, you can select the principled shader and then you can press Control shift t and that will bring up blender's file browser and then what you can do is just locate to the folder where you save the wood texture so i want to select the roughness hold down the control key and i also want to select the color and the normal gl just those three textures and then i can click on the principal texture setup and you can see it's already automatically set up the textures for us so i now want to use the box select and i want to box select all of the other objects of the birdhouse and then just hold down the shift key and lastly select this object here to make sure that's the active object. Then with Control L, we can link the materials. So just go here and click on Link Materials. So they all have the same material. So I now want to UV unwrap these objects because you can see the UV unwrapping is a bit messed up. There's some weird stretching right here and some stretching here, and the size of the wood texture is also different. So I'm going to click right here to go to the UV editing layout, and I'm going to zoom into the birdhouse, and I want to make sure I have all the objects selected, and then I can go into edit mode, and that way we can go into multi object editing and then I want to select all of the vertices with all the objects at once. So now that we have all the vertices selected I can hit the U button and we want to do the smart UV project. I'll just click on OK. So now that we've done that it's automatically UV unwrapped it and if I go into the material preview we can see what it's done. However I do want to scale the wood texture so it's about double the size so I'll select all of the UV mapping and I'll scale this and I can just type in 2 and then hit enter and that is pretty good. I might just scale it down a little bit smaller but something like that is pretty good. Now I do want to change some of the rotations because I want to make the longer parts of the objects be going along with the grain of wood just because that makes a bit more sense. So I'll deselect everything. I'm going to go to the face select and then with your mouse hovered over the different objects you can press the L key and that'll select the linked vertices and I'm going to do that for these here and also press the L key and select those ones there and that is fine. The grain of wood can be going back and forth like that. Also here I want to press Press the L key to select that one and also this one there and this one and this one and then also it would make sense for the grain of wood to be kind of going on the longer side so I'll press the L key to select that there. So now that I have all those objects selected I can press the A key just make sure those are selected there and I'm going to rotate the UV editing and I'll just rotate it by 90 and that way you can now see the grain of wood is going in the opposite direction and I can now go back here to the shading workspace. Now this wood texture is kind of nice but I want to make the wood look a bit more worn and a bit 
bit more old. So I'm going to be adding the ambient occlusion node and we're going to be mixing that with a noise texture and we're going to put it on the wood and it'll make the wood look a bit more worn and dirty and old and it'll also make some darkness in the edges. So let's first start by adding the ambient occlusion node. I'll drop it here and then because we have the node wrangler add-on enabled you can hold down the control and shift key and select different nodes to preview it. And I want to be able to see it better so I'll go to the add menu. I'm going to search for a color ramp just drop the color ramp there and I want to drag the black tab over so that the ambient occlusion is a bit darker. So just drag it right there and now you can see the edges are a bit darker and it's darker inside. But then I also want to mix this with some noise. So I'm going to add a noise texture. Let's just drop the noise texture underneath the ambient occlusion. I can bring these up so I have a bit more space. And then I want to preview the noise texture. Now I'm going to change the scale to 10. Let's also turn the detail way up so there's more detail. And I'll also turn the roughness up to like a 0.73 so it's even more detailed. And then I want this to be much more contrasty. So I'll take the color ramp and I'm just going to duplicate this color ramp and drop it down here. And then I want to just play around with the tabs here and I actually want to flip them. So I want to have the white tab about here and then I want to put the black tab to about there. So now we just have some little dark areas here and there and that is going to look like dirt and it's going to make the wood look a bit more worn. So I now want to mix these two together. So I'll go here to color and I'm going to add the mix color and then I can just preview this mix. And I want to take the first top color ramp, let's put that into A, and then I want this bottom color ramp here, I want that to go into the factor. Now I want the ambient occlusion to be affected by the noise texture, so I'm going to click on this mix here, and I'm going to change it to linear light instead. And then I just want to take color B, and I want to turn that to fully black so we can see the noise. So now you can see where there's more ambient occlusion, you're able to see the noise a bit better. So it looks a bit dirty here and there. And then also because of the ambient occlusion it looks a little bit darker here in the edges and where the objects are connecting it's a bit darker and where the objects are touching each other it's a bit darker so it now looks like there's little bits of dirt and it's kind of noisy all along those edges and you can also see it right there and I think there might be a little bit too much noise so I think I'll turn this scale down a little bit I might just turn the scale to like a six that looks a little bit better so I now want to mix this into the final base color to make it darker so I'll select the linear light and I'll duplicate this put it down here and then I want to change the type back to mix. Then I can just select all these nodes and I can bring them back a bit and then I just want to preview the mix. And I want to take the linear light here and I want to put the result into the factor. So the white and dark values of the linear light are determining where it's going to be color A and where it's going to be color B. So then I want to actually take the original base color and I want to put that into color B and then color A here I can just make that fully black. And now you can see there's some little dark areas here and there and it looks like dirt. So I can now control shift and select the principled shader and we'll just see how that material is looking. So that looks much more interesting now and it looks like it's a bit worn and old and a bit weathered. So I'm now going to box select all these nodes and I'll just bring them over so I have a bit more space because I want to edit the colors of the wood a little bit. So I'll go to the add menu. I'm going to search for the RGB curves and I'm just going to put this here so we can just edit the colors. So I want to make this wood a bit lighter. So I'm going to click and drag here, make this a bit lighter. Also click and drag here maybe bring this down a little bit. So something like that, just so that the wood is a bit lighter. And I think making the wood slightly more red looks really nice. So I'll click here on the R for the red, and I can just drag this up a little bit so that it's slightly more red. All right, so I now wanna duplicate this wood material, and we're gonna create a separate material for the roof. So I'm just gonna select one of the roof objects, and let's click here to the material properties, and we can duplicate the material by just clicking here. So now it is a separate material, and I can just rename it to wood dark. So now that this is a separate material, I can just edit the RGB curves. So if I click on the C here, I want to drag this down so it's a bit more down here. And then I can also drag this down and this is really going to make it look much darker. And if I click over here on the red, I might just want to drag this down a little bit so there's not quite as much red. And then I want to select this object here and let's click here on the drop down and I want to add the wood dark as well. So now that has the dark material too. And there we go. So we now have a really nice birdhouse. And then let's make some materials for the rope and the metal. So I'm going to select the metal here. Let's add a new material and I can just call this metal. And this is going to be a pretty simple material. Uh, the base color here, I'm just going to make this kind of like a light gray color. And then I'll also turn the metallic value all the way to one. So it is a metal material. And then I also want to turn the roughness down so it's a bit shiny. So I'll turn the roughness maybe to like a 0.25. So it's kind of shiny. And then I can select the other hook here. Let's click on the drop down and add the metal. And then we can just add a very simple material for the 
string. So I'll select the string, add a new material. I can just call this rope or string. And then for this material, I wanna take the base color. I'm gonna make this kind of orange and then I'm gonna make it very dark so it is like a dark brown. And then I can turn the roughness up a bit. So maybe I'll turn the roughness to like 8.8. .8 and all the birdhouse materials are finished. So now we're going to be creating a large tree branch which is going to curve around and the birdhouse is going to be hanging on top of it. So let's go back here to the layout and let's go to the add menu. I'm going to add a cylinder and then right after you add the cylinder if you open up the add cylinder settings I'm just going to make sure the vertices is 12 and then I can close this. So I'll scale this object way down make it much smaller and I can bring it up on the z-axis and I'll rotate it over on the x-axis by 9 and I will go to top view and I want to zoom in a bit and I'll scale this down a little bit more so it's about that size and I can bring it over here and then I want to go into edit mode and I'm just going to go to the vertex select and I want to go into wireframe and I just want to box select the back here and then I can rotate this and bring it over and then I can extrude this so I'll extrude this over scale it up a little bit and I'll extrude it a bit more and start to rotate it a little bit and I'll extrude it again rotate this over a little bit more and scale it and I'm going to have this branch slowly getting bigger and bigger and you can also box select any of these and rotate them around if you need to and then I also want to add some more loop cuts in here so I'll press ctrl R for a loop cut bring that there and I want to add a few more loop cuts in here because we are going to be adding a procedural material and the material will be using some displacements so I do want a little bit more geometry here and that way the displacements will have a little bit more detail to work with so I'm just gonna add a few more loop cuts and just kind of rotate this around I'll add a loop cut there and there and also maybe add a few loop cuts there. Then I'll go back to solid view and I can go to the face select and I can just select this face here and also this face here and I can just delete those faces because I don't need them. And then I can just shade this smooth with the object context menu. And then let's also press control 2 and that is going to add a subdivision surface modifier with two levels so it has a bit more geometry and it's a bit more smooth. So let's now add the material to this. But before I add the material, I do want to UV unwrap it. So I'll go into edit mode and I just want to hold down the alt key and select that loop of vertices there. And then I can press U and we just want to mark the seam, just to mark a seam there. And then I can select everything and we'll press U again and I can just do the default unwrap. So if I go over here to the UV editing layout and kind of zoom in here, because we've added a seam right there on the back, you can see that it's now opened up when it's been UV unwrapped. And I added the seam there on the back because the camera isn't able to see that seam. So we can now click right over here to go to the shading workspace. So I'm now going to be adding in my procedural white birch tree bark material. So if you haven't done this tutorial, then you can do the tutorial. I'll have the link in the description. Or if you want to purchase the material, then you can get the material on my Gumroad store. And if you join my Patreon page, you'll also get access to this procedural material. And also, if you've purchased my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack, then you'll have all of my procedural materials. So this material is also included in my Ultimate Procedural Material Pack. Or of course, if you wanted to, you could download some free wood texture from a free texture website and add that onto the wood as well. So I have my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack installed. And so what I've done is I've created this workspace here called Assets. And then right here, I have my Ultimate procedural material pack and so if you've purchased my ultimate procedural material pack then you can just locate to the asset browser and then you can go here to the search and you can search for bark or you can also find it in the bark catalog so I'm just going to drag it and drop it onto this object now if you have this procedural material but it's in another 3d scene then if you want to add in this material from one blender file to another then a really easy way to do that is to use blenders append feature so you can click on file and you can click on the append button and you can locate to where you have the white birch tree bark material. You can go into that blender file and go into the material folder and just select the white birch tree bark. And then once the data has been appended into the blender file, you can just go right here to the shader editor. You can click on the drop down and you can find the white birch tree bark material. So I can now just go back here to the shading workspace. So I'm going to hold down the Z button and go up into the rendered mode just to preview this. And we'll let it load up here in the material preview. So you can see that there's a few problems. One problem is that it is way too small and also the tree bark material isn't curving along with the branch so we're going to fix both of those issues. 
So let's start by applying the object scale. So I'll press Ctrl A, we can apply the scale and that's a bit better size. Now I think the size is still a little bit messed up, but first I wanna change the material from using the object coordinates to the UV coordinates, because you can see that the texture is still very stretched. So I'm gonna select the white birch bark and you can hit the tab key to go into the node group and we created this in the tutorial. So I'm gonna go right over here to this mapping, and right now we're using the object coordinates, but I wanna use the UV instead. So we'll plug the UV into the mapping, and then I can hit the tab key to go out of the node group. So that looks better, although you can see the size is messed up, so I can turn the scale up, but now you can see the texture isn't stretched. And I'm gonna turn the scale to a 3.5. I think 3.5 is a pretty good scale for the bark. So I can go back here to the layout. So now what I want to do is add a camera. So I'll go to the add menu. Let's just add a camera. You can move your view to where you want the camera to be and press control alt numpad zero. And then with the camera selected, you can just move it around. And also with the camera selected, I'm going to go here to the data properties. And I want to turn the focal length up just to like 80 to kind of zoom the camera in so it looks a bit more flat. So I can bring it over here, maybe rotate it a little bit and just bring it back a little bit. So I now want to select the branch and I'm going to bring it down a little bit and then I can also go to the side here rotate it over and that way it's kind of coming down a little bit and so now it looks like the birdhouse is hanging in the tree and then if I go back into the camera view I think I actually want to move this back a bit so it's a bit farther go back into the camera view by hitting the numpad zero and I can rotate this over a bit and kind of bring it down kind of rotate it over to the side so basically like that so now let's add the lighting so I'm first going to add in an HDRI so I'm going to go here to the world properties and add a new world you can click here on the yellow dot and we want to change this to the environment texture so that we can then open the HDRI. And here's the HDRI that I'll be using, the Whipple Creek Gazebo. Again, links in the description if you'd like to download this free HDRI from Polyhaven. And I downloaded the 1K HDR version. So I can just click on Open Image, and then I can just go into the rendered mode to preview that. And in the camera view, I'll just press Control B, and I'll drag a box around the camera just to use the camera boundary so it'll only render what the camera can see. I also want to add a direct sunlight, which is going to be much brighter. So I'll go here to Light and I'm going to add the sunlight and I can bring the sunlight up and rotate it over a little bit just kind of point it down at the scene and let's go over here to the light settings so I'm going to turn the strength up I'm actually going to turn it up really high to like a 20 and then also here let's change the color so to make this look like sunlight I'm going to make it a very slight yellow color and then also let's change the color management so we'll go to the render properties and I want to use filmic and also the look here I'll change this to high contrast so that the colors look a bit nicer and saturated and I want to select the light and double tap the R key to use the trackball rotation and just kind of rotate this around to something like that and then also let's go back here to the object data properties and I want to change this angle and the angle is going to change the sharpness of the shadows. So I want to change the angle to a 2.5 and now you can see that those shadows are just a little bit more blurry on the edges. So I now want to create three tree trunks in the background. So I'll go back to solid view and I'm going to select this object here and I will duplicate it and move it over here and I'm also going to rotate it down and kind of rotate it like this. So I'm now going to go into edit mode of this object and I'll go into wireframe and I just want to box select the top here which is curved and then I can just delete those vertices and then I can just select everything and I want to bring this over so that the object is more where its origin is and then I can go back to object mode and I can bring this down here and then I want to scale this up I want to make it quite a bit bigger because it's going to be a tree trunk not a tree branch so I'll scale this up and bring it back a little bit and then I'll go back into edit mode and I'll use the O key to turn on the proportional editing and I can just select this loop right here and then I want to rotate it and I want to move it over and I just want to make this much more straight so I'm going to rotate that and maybe even bring it up a little bit and then I can go back to object mode and I want to go back into the camera view to see how that's looking and I can maybe scale this down and bring it down a little bit so now what I want to do is have two more and what I'm actually going to do is press alt d instead of shift d so by pressing alt d the objects are going to use the same data and so that way the blender file won't use as much of the computer's memory because these objects have the same object data so I can bring this object back here 
make it a bit farther. We're going to have another tree trunk there, which is kind of farther back, maybe scale it up a bit. And then again, I will press Alt D so it has the same object data, and I can bring this one a bit more forward. So in the camera view, I want this one to be kind of off here to the side. This one, I think I want to scale down and kind of move it over a little bit, so something like that. And then this one can be a bit bigger and kind of in the back. So now if I go into the rendered view, we can check that out. So now you can see there are some tree trunks in the background, but we are going to be adding a depth of field to kind of blur it because right now they are a bit distracting and we just want the viewers to focus on the birdhouse. So we do want the background to be a bit blurred. Now because these are going to be in the background, we don't need quite as much subdivision. So I'm going to select the object here and we can go to the modifier properties and we can just turn the viewport and render levels down to one. And I'm going to do that for all three of them. So select this one here, turn the viewport and and render levels on the subsurf to one and also here as well just so that the scene is a little bit less dense and it'll be easier for blender to render so now let's add a depth of field so i'm going to go back to solid view and i want to add an object for the depth of field to focus so i'm going to go here to empty and i'm just going to add a plane axis and i can scale the plane axis down make it really small and i'll zoom into it and i want to bring it over here and i want to place it right at the birdhouse door so just scale that down and put it right there and this is where where the camera is going to focus on. So now if we select the camera, we can go here to the data properties to add the depth of field. So let's turn on the depth of field and then we just need to use the eyedropper. So I'll use the eyedropper here and we can just select the empty. So now in the camera view, if you go into the rendered mode, you can see that depth of field taking effect. So now we can really just focus on the birdhouse and it looks like there's a forest in the background. Let's also select the camera again and we can change the f-stop and that is going to control the amount of blur. And I'm going to change the f-stop to just like a 2.5 so it's pretty blurred. Alright so I'll save this file again with Control s and this is going to finish up part 2 of this tutorial series. So I hope you've been enjoying this so far and thank you so much for watching. And when part 3 is released it'll be right up there on the end screen and also the link in the description. And again if you'd like to help support this channel and purchase the project files you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page, and I do really appreciate your support. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in part three.